What are we talking about? We spoke this morning. And based on that, what he was even said, the solid rock, what is the revelation? Is God speaking in my heart? Is it not God speaking in my heart? Hello? But for God to speak in my heart and to build accurately, to build on the solid rock that it will not fail, I need to understand how to hear him. And one of the things, the major things is, I cannot distinguish his voice. One of the things that we said this morning was, if I know the vocabulary of his word, the vocabulary of God, then we can hear him. But if I hear all the voices of what I think is right and what is wrong, and if I hear all the voices of my circumstance, my success, my failures, my strategies, all that things, I'm so acquainted with that vocabulary. I'm so acquainted, acquainted with the language of my circumstance. So acquainted with the, with the language of what I know about the word. That I don't even realize it's not when I, that scripture that is coming up in my heart. <clears throat> I don't even realize it's just a voice saying what I know. It's not God saying that in that situation. Hello? I can be in a situation and uh, I can, the scripture can come up in my heart. But you know, the devil can also quote scripture. <laughs> but I need to understand his voice. That what is coming in my heart, coming up in my heart, it is the Holy Spirit testifying in my spirit what God is saying at that moment. It's not just about quoting a scripture. Because it can be Satan quoting the scripture in my ear. Like Satan quote, he could say what the word says when he tempted Jesus. Hello? He said to God, the son of God, the word says this, the word says that. Hello, the spirit of religion can quote some scriptures like you cannot do at all. The spirit of religion can quote in you some scriptures. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, they saw Jesus and he spoke a lot of words. He spoke the scriptures, but there were a lot of other scriptures and religious <coughs> doings, but a lot of scripture. That could come up in their heart. And they took offense against Jesus in the light of a lot of scriptures that they knew. Uh, hello? The word is dangerous if you use it in a wrong way. But how is either don't know the word or if you come to know the word, go all the way with the spirit. Are you with me? But as you wait on God, as we want to wait on God, <clears throat> and I can only hear the voices of circumstances, I cannot hear what God is saying, then the waiting is long. It's long. It takes time to wait on God and find the answers and all these things. But if I come to know the vocabulary of his heart, of the language, in what he is speaking, I can start to identify quicker, if I can say like that, what he is saying. As we said this morning, it's like, uh, as the word says, wait on the leader inside of you. Let's say the leader inside of you is a Chinese. It's a Chinese living in you. And the Chinese has only the best for you. And if you can hear what the Chinese saying, <laughs> oh no, that's more uh, a booze man. Um, <laughs> Speak Chinese, someone? <laughs> no, that's a uh, Kalkun. 
Okay, bottom line, bottom line. If a Chinese is inside of you, <clears throat> and that Chinese is the best that you can have, and if you can hear what the Chinese is saying, you will have the most awesome, awesome, awesome life. And without understanding what the, and hearing what the Chinese is saying inside of here, you're just going to waste your life. What is the most excellent, best thing to do? Learn the Chinese language. Not true. I, I'm asking. So that you can understand what he's saying. So that as you understand what he's saying, you can do what he's saying. And the best is there for you. Now, my brother, my sister, the leader is inside of you. You are waiting on the one that is inside of you because the Holy Spirit testifies in you and the fullness of God dwells in your spirit. So the voice of God is inside of you. You know the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of God because you have the mind of Christ in your spirit according to the word. Amen. Amen. But if God is inside here, but you never learn the language, even though his heart is is everything for you, even though there's the most excellent life that God has for you. Even though he's speaking, you can't understand what he is saying. You can wait on God and wait on God and wait on God, but you don't understand what he is saying because it's like speaking Chinese to you. And you don't know how to interpret the situation. Don't know how to interpret what he is saying. So if you need to learn Chinese, what is the language that he is speaking? The word of God. If you don't know the word of God, how can you understand the context from where he is speaking? How can you understand? So that immediately there's thoughts coming up in you and immediately this is not God that will say this because it's, this is contrary to the word. So it's like subconsciously and consciously, immediately a lot of thoughts are just away. You don't even give attention to that possibility of certain voices in your head. Because you know the language and you know that is some foreign language. You know that's some foreign idea. That is some, some idea. That is some strategy. That is some dream. That is some logic. That is not from him. So halfway through the sentence of that suggestion in your head, you cut it out already. So in waiting on God, there's a lot of voices, there's a lot of things that I can just cut out, but somebody else that don't know the word will only cut out in 30 days. You can cut out in three hours. That sounds very hmm. But I'm saying, because that person is trying to figure out and he's reasoning with someone, he's reasoning in his head, he's reasoning with issues in his heart. And with all the reasoning and all the issues, he cannot get there because he don't know the language and he doesn't know how to interpret. Come to know the word of God and you will not waste your life. Because even if you say you will go and wait on God, even if you go in prayer and fasting, but you don't come to know the word, you are wasting your time in prayer. You with me? Come to know the language. It does not help. That you love the Chinese and you want to know what he is saying, what you must do. But you cannot understand anything. Anybody have been there except me already? That you sometimes you would pray and you would be, and then you get even more confused. Because it's just going to work like that. It's, it's not super spiritual. It's not, so, it's not so deep revelation. It's not so difficult to understand. It's just like the logic what a guy out there would understand that has four brain cells. That if you don't learn the language, you cannot understand what the person is saying. Now why can we not grasp that principle? That that guy with four brain cells can understand. And that is, if you don't know the language... You cannot understand what he is saying. So let's come to know the language. That's the word of God. Come to know the language. And life can be so much simpler. 
and the waiting can be so much easier. But sometimes God wants us to wait because he needs to get us to the point of getting rid of all the voices. Be still and know. Be still, be still, be still, be still. Come into the place where you are emptied of all that other voices. You're with me? Because when his voice is coming through, the truth will set you free. Free to have an excellent life with Christ. Free to walk in his will. Not just to do what he says because you could be just in performance. No, to do his will because you are worshipping him in spirit and truth doesn't help you stand with issues the whole time before God. He doesn't want that for his child. He doesn't want you to stand there before him and your whole being is stressed and you have so much, a lot of voices in you and between all the voices you say, God, I love you. Yes, there's certain situations where God is taking us through. But I must come to the place where I can just be at peace and look at him, at him and say, God, I love you. And be satisfied by saying that. Beyond all the things that is not lacking in my life. We've talked about Philippians 4, verse 6 to 6 and 7 and 8. <clears throat> that has, first of all, to do with contentment. But also has to do with the whole thing about waiting on God. It was, first of all, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious of anything. Why would you be anxious? Because you are thinking on certain things. You cannot be anxious if there's not certain thoughts, if there's not certain voices speaking to you. You can only be anxious if there's certain voices in your head speaking to you. If there's certain experiences, and you gave to that experience a voice. You had an experience of, of where you don't trust any, someone anymore. You had this trust with somebody and they hurt you. You had this thing and you don't like what they are saying. That people took offense. That person talked behind your back. And that talk behind your back, you say, I release that in Jesus' name. Bless that man. I forgive him. And by the blood of Christ, it's sealed. Or, first of all, go to him. I hear this and this. That's the best, even. And say, is this what really happened? Like I say, so many times, so many times, most, so many times, you are figuring it out and you forgive that man. But maybe he didn't even say that. Now you had to work it through and you forgave that man. You didn't have to forgive him many times because he didn't even say that. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, my brother, my sister, don't be anxious of anything. And you will be anxious based on voices that you allow. Where you give an experience a voice. An experience a voice. That experience is sealed by the blood of Christ. It's forgiven. According to God, he doesn't even remember that again. What does that mean? He does not give that thing a voice to remind him about what you've done. <clears throat> He will not honor any voice to remind him of your past. But me and you, we can give an experience a voice. And I allow that hurt that that person did. I allow that thing that brought a, such a discouragement in me. I allow that thing to speak to me. I must let that voices go. In Jesus' name. Amen. But his, his voice will become clear. If I allow him to speak, it's not I allow him to speak. I need to know his voice. Because the Chinese can speak very loud. They would, I don't hear anything else. And it's... And that's the only voice in you. It's so clear. It's so loud. But don't, you don't understand a thing. So yes, we can empty ourselves with all the other voices. And that's what people in the East especially can do excellent. 
and they can meditate and empty themselves with a lot of voices. What's the difference between us and them? You can fill yourself with the voice of heaven. You can fill yourself with the authority of that what will shake heaven and earth. And that what will stand forever until he comes. Fill yourself with the words that will be fulfilled. But fulfillment will come from heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And you will earth the words from heaven. And it will happen. Because you chose to be an open channel. Open channel. That is pure. Even on that day when a million or more will come together. It's not about that day, first of all. It's about what the church will do now. To cleanse ourselves from all the things. So that even that day we will be open channels that when we come together and the cloud of His glory is, is revealed through us, where even more, so much more is coming through us, that we will be clean vessels. That we will be clean vessels. And that what we receive will not be contaminated. To give through to the nation, it will be contaminated because we were not pure vessels. We came with issues into His presence to agree with the other million. Let it be a million people agreeing with you. Let it be the church agreeing with one another about what God says, agreeing with the word of God about what he says. It's not about then, it's about now. It's about what the church is doing now. That is just the coming together. And for the final breakthrough, like we said, the damn wall, the damn wall, fill up. And that day is just the breaking of the wall. To go in all the streams into this country and have an effect so that everything will start to blossom. Because of his glory, because of the church that decided to purify themselves. Please, don't go there to repent. That's nonsense. You are mature enough to repent now. Repent now. Get your issues, issues sorted out. Sort it out with people around you. So that in that day we can stand on behalf of the nation. So that on that day we can stand as clean vessels on behalf of the nation. Amen. Like Elijah was a clean vessel. And he prayed and the things just have happened. Heaven and earth were sealed. Between heaven and earth everything was sealed. And three and a half years later, three years later he prayed and it was open. So God we pray for the heavens. To be opened up. But by God's grace, the biggest thing, may we be true receivers. Let it be done to us according to your word for South Africa. But somebody needs to be worthy of the call. Somebody needs to stand there as worthy vessels. Somebody needs to stand there. That will not go there away and deceive the nation because of contaminated, contaminated truth. And contaminated, that I can contaminate that what I received as in his presence. Amen. So the most important for you, my brother, my sister, and the most important for the church is not the day. The most important for the church is everything before the day. Bring yourself into that place. Amen. As we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord. Don't be anxious of anything. Philippians 4 verse 6. But. But. How can you deal with it? But. In everything. With. Prayer. Supplication. Or petition. Supplication. And thanksgiving. What is that prayer? With everything, position yourself not there in the anxiety. Not there in the voices that brings craziness in you, that makes you... What's the word? In, into some other state that is not from God. No. Bring yourself, in, position yourself with Him. That's, don't be anxious, but position yourself with Him. Prayer and supplication is that intensity. With positioning yourself with him with an intensity. Intensity not to stress. But an intensity with your whole being. What is the 
greatest commandment, that you will love God with your soul, with your mind, with everything that is available in your whole life. You put it all in. Not to be stressed. Stress and anxiety is the copycat. The devil cannot create an original thing. So there's an intensity in stress and fear and anxiety and all the things and in all the issues. There's an intensity that can destroy you. But there's an intensity that can give you life. Life and life and life. You with me? Everybody? Life. One, two, three. Life. Not never, uh, another one. Life. Okay. So, no anxiety. Not that intensity that's going to kill you. No. Get rid of that now in the name of Jesus. Or how? Just by, don't fight the anxiety. Just come to God. Position yourself with Him. And love Him with an intensity. Love Him with an intensity. But then also with thanksgiving. That if there's answers about my situation, if I don't have answers, if I have answers, doesn't matter what, I am thanking my God. Gratitude. Thank you, God. Seeing the beauty of life. If I can see the beauty of life, I can enjoy life. You cannot enjoy life can, if you cannot see the beauty of life. You cannot enjoy the beauty of your situation. doesn't matter where you are, with who you are, and whatever. If you are really truly a follower with, of Christ and you are mature in your walk with Him, you can enjoy your life. doesn't matter where you are because it's with who you are. If that cannot be a reality yet. Be shocked about your flesh and deal with that. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. And deal with that. Huh. So that I can have the beauty of life by I'm thanking Him in spite of whatever. It's not so that the in spite of will change. No, it's so that I can change. So that life can become beautiful by thanking Him. By thanking him so that life can be beautiful, in s still in the midst of whatever. Still in the midst of whatever. I've positioned myself with God in the whatever. I've put intensity, not in the situation, in, but intensity with my love for him. And I'm thanking him for who he is and what he'd do. And if I understand what he is doing, I don't know, I have a cooking clue, but I will still thank him. Amen? And if I'm in that place, what will happen? And the peace that transcends all understanding will be with you. And it will guard your heart and guard your mind. You'll be arrested by that peace. And you will know what God is saying. Because you will be guided by that peace. We don't need to sort out everything in our lives to be guided by God. But if we can allow this process, we go beyond our shortcomings. We go beyond so many things that we experience. You with me? You give that thing in a certain sense a flat ignore. You send that thing away with rejection. You reject because you reject the, the issues. You reject all that things. And so many times we don't have to even deal with that issues because you just decided to reject it. You decided that that is not important. That what is important to is to follow him. There was some other movie that talked about life and opportunity is not the and the right choices. It's not because of the absence of fear, but because of the realization of the, of that what you are going to do is more important than the fear. That you just go beyond the fear, and that's not trying to. Live in a world that doesn't exist. No, that's a reality of peace beyond your circum circum situation. Hello? Come into that place, my brother. Come into that place, my sister. But how will you do that? Because the next verse is, think upon the following. That what is good, what is this, what is that. You cannot think upon all of that things if you don't go through this process, if you don't go through prayer, if you don't position yourself. Amen.
but just to choose not to be anxious is not going to work. Follow the pattern God has given you. Can you be with me? Okay. So the bottom line, get the word in. Get the word in so that you understand the language and that you can go with what God is saying. That you can go with what God is saying. And even with the voices, all with that understanding, with that peace that is on your life. You're sitting here with the voices. When we are together like this, you can have such a breakthrough by just hearing and immediately applying and immediately choosing to go beyond that. Sitting here with anxiety or issues or with a lot of voices speaking, having a fight inside of you, don't understand. And you choose that only if you understand, you will have peace. Only if you understand, you will be happy. Only if you are not confused, you will have joy. That's your religion. That's some other mindset that you've given yourself. That you need to be set free from. Hello? May God set us free then. Because it's a new day. It's a new day that God has. For this country and for the world. As so many prophetic words, so many prophetic words, so many prophetic words in so many decades, different fa uh, phases of, of decades, came through that there will be a time where there's revival from South Africa and it will shake Africa. And from Africa it will shake the world. And there was prophetic words, there were prophetic words about from the center of the country, yes, and about Cape Town, but that something will be coming forth. From the place where justice, the place where laws are made. And it will come through from the tip of Africa. Are you with me? You know, um, this morning the people said they didn't know about that, even though I said it in, the, in church. But um, in the seasons, what people say, uh, I read a book, this was like 10, 15 years ago. Where this man explained how the mandate was given in the Middle East for the gospel to be taken further. Not the guys that were here, but the rest. Have you heard this before? Okay. In the Middle East where the gospel had to be taken and even God had to organize that, that the guys had to flee. Had to flee the Jews. Those who didn't come to repentance so that they would take, go and take the gospel from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. And they took the gospel, but they took the gospel especially to Europe. And the Spirit hindered Paul to go to the east. And they took the gospel to Europe. And God did a mighty work in Europe. And religion and relationship with God was established in Europe. And God gave Europe the mandate to take the gospel everywhere. It was taken to Africa. It was taken to the islands. It was taken to Americas. Hello? And then suddenly everything was shaken. The enemy came in and the church couldn't facilitate that what God had further. And wars. First World War. Second World War. Like we said, when England and Germany decided how they will reach the world. And suddenly they became the biggest enemies. When you want to do something with God and a specific people that God has called you to be with, make sure that war doesn't break out between England and Germany in your midst. Because of mandate for nations that God has for you. Let's learn. Hello? And what happened? The mandate goes to shift to America. And suddenly, breakthrough, and people start to speak in tongues, and the whole Pentecostal movement came from America and went all over the world. People starting to speak in tongues. Baptism in the Holy Spirit came right to, on through all continents in the world. And with that, the charismatic flow came. And the word, word movement came of going by faith and standing with faith. You as an individual, how you can have victory by faith in standing with Christ in his name. 
Hello? Things start to be established. What happened next? Go to the east and suddenly, cell church. Not just Paul Yankito, but he was like suddenly well known all over the world. And everybody starts to understand, but the small group is very important. Accountability is very important. Family is the center in the midst of knowing the word, where the individual can stand by faith, speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit is on him. He can have victory in every facet. Gifts are moving through him. Now the family concept, but in the smallest part, must come into place for the church in the world. And suddenly all over the world you find all these books about cell churches and cells and, and how each one is supposed to get out to one another's heart and hold one another accountable. Excellent. Suddenly what happens? South America. And the teaching came through, set your church free. Spiritual mapping, prayer, intercession. Suddenly it comes in, into place in the world. Hello? And what is left? Africa. Africa is the time for this continent. It's the time for this continent. And it was said, it was so many times prophesied that Africa will be the food basket to the world. And not just the physical food basket, but the spiritual food basket for the world. Because there's a level of spirituality in this, in this continent that the enemy has used because of the redemptive destiny of Africa. The enemy used it. So with ancestral worship, with all these things, and the calling up the so-called, calling up the dead and the ancestors to help, a lot of rubbish happened. So there's a spiritual thing in Africa that is not like that in the, other, in the world, in other continents, hanging there. That is not from heaven, is not brought down to earth in Africa. Food basket. When the nation of God, hello, nation of God had no food, they had to flee to Africa, Egypt. And Africa provided for the nation of God. The problem then, Africa enslaved the nation of God and brought a curse on Africa of slavery. That doesn't justify those who enslaved them, not at all. That doesn't justify that. But that must bring the fear of God on our lives. That what I sow, I will reap. That what I judge, I will be judged. And that must only bring the fear of God on our lives, nothing else. And Africa is fighting one another and corruption and whatever is out there. But there's a time of understanding, especially in the end time, like coming into that phase where the supernatural, where the greatness of God is just so revealed. Why is it so easy in Africa for that evangelist to come in there and it's just miracles, miracles upon miracles? Because there's a certain spirituality in Africa. It's just there. But when Africa can grow up and become mature in the word... Become mature, become mature. Not a sudden and because of the gifts manifesting, everybody thinks everything is great. And then the people go, but it was the gifts moving and the presence was there and it was this mighty things that happened. But that happened with a crowd, you know? And in the end, they didn't follow Jesus. So many of them, they didn't follow Jesus. Even though they saw the miracles, they themselves were healed. They turned away. So that is what so many times happened in Africa. But suddenly there will be a death with the word of God. Amen. Suddenly we find so many, so many groups, so many flows of churches that have Bible schools in Africa. And you hear about all these thousands of pastors that are trained. And these, why it's the time? It's the time for the word to bring in such a foundation in the nations of Africa. Hello? So that from that foundation, Africa will rise. And with the word as foundation, the supernatural will not become the identity. But the identity is through the word in Christ. 
Amen. And when that is into place, my brother, from this continent, revival will go. Amen. 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 And I'm serious. But now I'm asking, let's take it back. Africa and the prophecies of Africa and the prophecies Cape Town and Bluefontein. We are not the guys. But the nation coming together. What if this is the time? What if this is the time? We'll be the, we be the stupid, foolish virgins. Or will we sort out our lives now with God and with the Holy Spirit? Be wise builders, wise builders by building the foundations right now. Wise virgins by understanding how to be in the Spirit now. So that in that day we will be such open vessels so that he can come. He can come and do that what he has for us and for so much and so many more. Amen. Did God give that ground to us just so that we can have a piece of ground? No. I need you and we need you to be there. So that when you are there Friday, you will be praying. We will have a nice time with either brying or eating pies or carrots, you know? But that will not be the essence. We will enjoy one another. But I'm telling you now, mark my words, <laughs> there will be already a certain presence when you come Friday. There will be already a certain presence with the people coming there. Because they will... There's something that they will draw in the expectation from heaven. We will have a nice worship time in the hall. And maybe just worship music that's on the whole time. For those who just want to be sitting there, laying there before the Lord, just reading word, and there's this music. Maybe something like that. Are you with me? Maybe on the hill with the three crosses that will be up. Maybe they, there will be some music and we will, some will just sit there, look at the stars, look at how the people come in, how they park, how they are doing this, how some of them got on the, get on the ground to go and sleep there. And, blah, 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 blah. and we just sit and we're going to go with God. But let's be available for Him. One of the, every time, one of the cliches from Angus Buchan is just, are you available? Are you available? I charge you, I challenge you to be available. Amen. Thank you, Father, that you come and change us, Lord. But God, give us your perspective. Help us to get so in the word. Help us to stand so much in your word, Lord. That through your word, the change will come. Help us to be wise virgins. Wise builders, and even as we take, partake in communion now, Lord, we want to say we do this because of the blood of Christ. Because out of ourselves, there's nothing we can do. Whatever is going to happen there, it's not because of some excellence of people in Bluefontein, some great men and women in the nation, first of all, Lord, but because of the cross of Christ. But because of the perfect 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 finished work that you brought jesus on the cross so therefore or even tonight we declare that you come and purify our lives through the blood and that your body was broken so that our lives and our our being can be healed and be whole we thank you for that father we thank you for that Father. We thank you for that Father. In Jesus' name.